we're going to talk about two consumer laws to help you delete any negative item from your credit reports. So none of this is legal advice. Just keep that in mind. Let's get straight to it. So number one, we're going to talk about 15 USC 1681I procedure in case of disputed accuracy. So if you're new to consumer laws, this is basically the investigation section. And in order to have a claim under this specific section, you have to directly contact the credit bureau. So we're going to talk about that. So 15 USC 1681I, the investigation section. So when we look at it, you want to look at uh, A1A. So reinvestigations of disputed information, reinvestigation required. So we're basically telling them what they need to do. So subject to subsection F and except as provided in subsection G, if the completeness or accuracy, let me just go ahead and highlight that. Because a lot of people, they think that it's just about if the item is going to be inaccurate, right? You can look at completeness as well. If you're looking at the credit report and you're seeing that maybe there's gaps in payment history, you know, it's incomplete, right? That's what it is. So you, you can dispute that. So don't sleep on the fact that you can dispute if it's incomplete. It doesn't have to just be inaccurate, right? And then on top of that too, like if there's an investigation that's done, a third element you want to be aware of is if it's unverifiable, then that's when it's like, okay, this thing needs to get deleted. So if you're looking at the credit reports, you see the completeness or accuracy um, in, the, in the consumer's file, in your file or your client's file, whatever. Um, if you dispute it and you notify them, which is what you're supposed to do, it's supposed to be done directly. So I would recommend doing certified mail. We're going we're gonna to get into what I want you to be aware of. And then remember the term shall means that it has to be done. It's not like optional. So what they're supposed to do, they're supposed to conduct a reasonable reinvestigation. We're going to get into the fact that they never do stuff like that, right? So this is really going to be the key to being able to get any of those negative items, inaccurate items deleted from your credit report. And this is a high income skill, y'all. I'm letting y'all know, like, if you understand how to remove these items from your credit report using these consumer laws, you literally got a high income skill. I used to work a nine to five, like over two years ago. Once I learned about this credit stuff, no nine to five. <laughs> so they're basically supposed to, you know, do a reasonable investigation, which they won't do. I'm, I'm telling you, they're not going to do that. And then after they're supposed to delete the item from the file, et cetera. Um, so yeah, that's what they're supposed to do. So let's get into it. In order to have a claim under 15 USC 1681I, you have to directly, like I said, you have to directly notify the credit bureaus of what was wrong with your report. And it has to be proven that they didn't do a reasonable investigation. So when I say you got to notify them of what's wrong, you can't just send a notice and be like, okay, this Capital One account is wrong. Like be specific about what's wrong with it. You want to get your actual credit report. We're going we're gonna to get into it, but you want to get your actual credit report from annualcreditreport.com. Don't get it from... I understand like, you know, the identity IQs and all that. That's cool. But the way you want to look at it is you want to use their data against them, right? When you look at these different case laws and stuff that's actually powerful, these people got it from annualcreditreport.com. Go directly to the source. That's the way you want to look at it. This Like this is war. We're going to war with these people, right? And I want y'all to dispute the correct way. Yes, you can dispute um, through, you know, if you if you use if your claim is identity theft, you, you can do, you know, the whole FTC and all that, like, you know, that works and stuff like that. But I want y'all to have more ways, more ammo, ammunition to be able to get these disputes done and basically have a bulletproof deletion system. You know what I'm saying? So whether you're a credit repair business owner or if you're just somebody that's like. Just a consumer that just wants the knowledge, you know. So let's talk about a scenario, very common scenario, right? What I want you to do, you're going to pull your credit reports. Like I said, it's going to be from annualcreditreport.com. We don't want you to use like third party ones or like identity IQ. I mean, you could do all that, you know, you'll get results that way. But when we're talking about like holding these people legally liable, this is the most professional way to actually dispute. So you're going to find the items that are reporting inaccurately or incomplete, inaccurate. 
or incomplete, right? So you're going to pull your credit report. You're going to look at it. Look at the payment history. Look at the uh, open closing dates. Look at like any gaps. If they say something is like, let's say they have, you're, you're good on payments here, good on payments here. All of a sudden, in uh, May 2020, it says like no data available, which is something that's very common on the credit reports. We're not accepting no data available. That's incomplete. So we're going to circle that and we're going to, you know, basically dispute that. So this is all part of what we want to do when it comes to putting the obligation on them that they have to do this investigation. So yeah, once you actually have your actual credit report from annualcreditreport.com, this is what I want you to do. I want you to sit with it. You can print it out and everything. I want you to print it out. You're going to circle and mark up everything that's inaccurate or incomplete and inform them in a dispute letter pointing it out. It's as simple as that. It's going to take time. It might be like, oh, dang, I want to be lazy with the dispute. You, you know, you might want to do all that, but it's like, this is going to help you in the long run if you want to actually have a claim and sue them, right? So yeah, like I said, don't just say that an entire account is negative. Like, oh, the Capital One account is just wrong. It's inaccurate. It needs to be deleted. Point out what's wrong with it. You feel me? Because that's too generic and it won't help with suing them um, if we want to hold them accountable. In the letter, you're letting them know that you want them to perform a reinvestigation and I want you to send a certified mail. They're not going to do it because you're going to get the e-Oscar stuff, but you just want to hold them liable. So like I said, um, it's going to make it their obligation, right? They're obligated. There's case law on this. There's They're obligated to perform a reinvestigation, but we all know that they're not going to do a reasonable investigation because a lot of times what they'll do if it's not going to be the um, ACDV, the, the ACDV is basically the e-Oscar thing. If they're not just going to give you something automated like that, they're just going to, maybe if they talk to the furniture, they'll just take what the furniture says for face value. What you got to understand, if you have that actual inaccuracy on your report, if they are reporting what the furniture is saying, like the furniture just said, oh no, it's, it's, it's good. It's good to go. And they didn't do like actual investigation. The furniture is giving them wrong information. They report it. You can sue them under 1681I. That's why we're using this section, right? So we're holding them liable to do a reasonable investigation. They're not going to do a reasonable investigation. I'm letting you know right now, right? They're just going to hit you, oh, verify, right? So keep that in mind. So that's what you'll do. Send that letter. And once you've trapped them, you know what you should know what to do. Let's talk about a second consumer law, right? So we just talked about 15 USC 1681I. This is holding the credit bureaus or the consumer reporting agencies accountable under uh, the law of investigation. So we have a, a separate law that holds the furnishers accountable under investigation. So this is 15 USC 1681 S-2, responsibilities of furnishers of information to consumer reporting agencies. So this is basically the same thing as 1681 I, but it's just in terms of applying to the furnishers. So duty of furnishers of information to provide accurate information so you can read it. You're not, they're not supposed to report inaccurate information. The interesting thing about it though, in order to have a claim under this section, it has to be a 1681S-2B. You can't have a claim under a 1681S-2A. So you can look up case law, like I said, on this just to give you more like, I guess, confidence and context as far as how to go about it. But let's talk about the scenario. So you find out that the, the furnisher is reporting inaccurate information on your report or your clients if you're a credit repair business owner and you know it's being reported to the credit bureaus. What you want to do is contact the credit bureaus. You have to contact the credit bureaus. Remember, look, we're in 15 U.S.C. 1681. Because we're in 15 U.S.C. 1681, we're not in like the Credit Billing Act. We're not in the FDCPA. We're in the FCRA. So this has to deal with the credit bureau. So in order to make it an obligation under 1681S-2B, you have to contact the credit bureaus. Obviously, you can contact the furnishers too, but in order to make it an obligation to hold the furnishers accountable, you have to contact the credit bureaus. So keep that in mind. Replay this video as many times as you need to um, so that you can actually get it. So yeah, like I said, if you fail to contact the credit bureaus, your case will be thrown out. Like you can look up Daniels versus Capital One. I was reading that case. And that's a perfect example of what not to do because pretty much just as a summary, what, what he did in the case was he, 
he disputed, but it was just with the furnishers. He didn't dispute with the credit bureaus. You have to dispute with the credit bureaus to actually have it as a claim under there, right? To have a claim under this section, let's talk about what you got to do. Let's talk about it. Number one, you have to contact the credit bureaus, like I said. So the same way that you're doing with uh, 1681I, you want to do the same thing here. Uh, you basically got to allege that the bureaus notified the furnisher, which basically obligates them to do an investigation. So you're seeing the parallel 1681I is for the credit bureau, 1681S-2B is for the furnishers. So anytime that you dispute information, both parties have to do a reasonable investigation. Both parties have to do a reasonable investigation, right? So keep that in mind. And then the last thing to actually have a claim under S-2B, you have to allege uh, basically that you have to allege the facts that shows the furnishers failed to do a reasonable investigation and is continuing to furnish that inaccurate information. And then you, you can go ahead and sue them under 1681 S-2B. So I'll say that to say there's many ways to dispute when it comes to your credit report, obviously, but I want y'all to take these two laws into consideration when you're sending out those disputes because a lot of times you're going to catch one of them and be able to go ahead and have that claim. So really sit and study your credit reports, right? Really sit and study your credit reports. If you want like an actual case law, like for what to do, there's a specific uh, case that I dropped in my monthly community. I have a monthly community called the Cat Credit University where I basically help people start and grow their credit repair business. Um, you know, God has blessed me to be able to leave my nine to five over two years ago when I was uh, building up my credit repair business. So this is just my token of passing information along. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I have a high ticket mentorship. So this is just a monthly community on a low cost to be able to allow people to come as a community on a, a low investment to be able to just collaborate and get some more consumer law information and just be able to understand how to delete any item because the biggest marketing you can do is in your results. So if you can, you can understand everything I'm saying in here, you can actually execute upon it and get results. You're not going to have a problem with getting new clients. So hopefully this video helped. Hopefully you're able to take action on um, everything I said. If you want to join our community, like I said, um, it's normally $200 a month uh, for the next maybe five, 10 people after we upload this video. We'll do 50% off, which is just uh, $100 a month, and you'll be locked in with us. So, yeah, if you want to get those uh, cases and just get in, get in an environment with like-minded individuals that are talking about these types of conversations, you know, maybe you're working at nine to five. Nobody around you knows about consumer law. Maybe no one in your family knows about consumer law. Maybe no one in your circle knows about consumer law. You want to get in an environment of people that are talking about consumer law, that are talking about elevating, that are talking about you know, the business funding, scaling, starting, growing, go ahead and uh, click the link in the description. With that being said, y'all have a blessed one.